uh, what will the what will the Freedom Caucus do if the, the the people who are objecting to this bill get overridden? If the Republicans get overridden by a uh, a Republican speaker teaming up with Democrats to pass this bill? Uh, again, I think the operative question there is whether or not the speaker can get to a majority of the majority. If, if a majority of Republicans are against a piece of legislation and you use Democrats to pass it, that would immediately be a black letter violation of the deal we had with McCarthy to allow his assent to the speakership, and it would likely trigger an immediate motion to vacate. I think Speaker McCarthy knows that. That's why he's working hard to make sure that he gets you know, 120, 150, 160 votes, and that's why those of us who are not supportive of the bill are trying to point out that many of of the changes are cosmetic in nature and Joe Biden's administration is going to be able to waive uh, certain requirements and certain conditions that sound like great talking points but that don't save the country from the ruin that the Biden administration is bringing us to. Hold on. You mean to tell me that extremist Republicans who were empowered by Kevin McCarthy himself in exchange for their support for his speaker's bid is now backfiring on McCarthy when those same people didn't get all of their extremist priorities satisfied in his latest budget proposal? Who could have possibly seen this coming? This is Matt Gates, part of a growing faction of Republicans who are now in open revolt against Kevin McCarthy for agreeing to a debt ceiling deal with Biden that Republicans view as insufficient for their extremist needs. A deal, by the way, that is our only and last hope at avoiding default, which will happen on June 5th unless the debt ceiling is lifted. And as I've mentioned before in previous videos, default would mean that we are plunged into a recession, stock markets would tank, and the US dollar would lose its place as the world's reserve currency. All of which underscores the importance of getting a deal passed, since Republicans decided that they need to exact concessions with our own economy as the hostage. And yet, the impending consequences still weren't enough to persuade certain Republicans. For example, Chip Roy came out and said, not one Republican should vote for this bill. We will continue to fight it today, tomorrow, and no matter what happens, there's going to be a reckoning about what just occurred unless we stop this bill by tomorrow. Republican Dan Bishop said, I'm fed up with the lies. I'm fed up with the lack of courage, the cowardice. Nobody could have done a worse job. And of course, here's Marjorie Taylor Greene voicing her concerns and, for good measure, introducing a poison pill. So one of the sides, so to speak, that I would like to see with this shit sandwich is a way to completely wipe out the uh, 87,000 IRS agents. Um, we need a balanced budget, that's for sure, but we need dessert, okay? Everybody needs dessert. I'm a dessert girl. Everyone loves dessert. And that's impeachment. Someone needs to be impeached. And that has to happen. People are sick and tired of corruption, uh, people doing things wrong. She won't vote for a bill to prevent the U.S. from default unless Joe Biden is also impeached because she needs her dessert. I will just say that this woman is deeply unserious, dangerous, and woefully unqualified because that is a nicer way of saying that she is a very stupid person. Now, according to reporting, Kevin McCarthy doesn't seem especially concerned about this bill's passage, although there's certainly cause for concern because if this bill is to make it to the House floor for a vote, it has to make it out of the Rules Committee. Now, you'll remember, though, that as part of McCarthy's concessions for becoming Speaker, he filled the Rules Committee with a bunch of far-right conservatives. Two of those conservatives are Chip Roy and Ralph Norman, whose quotes I read previously. They are very clearly not supportive of the bill. All it takes is one more Republican to come out against it, and it's unlikely that the bill would advance with Republican support. And there is another far-right member on the panel, Thomas Massey, but Massey has so far expressed support for the deal, saying most recently, this debt deal arguably puts us on a better footing to do the appropriations process properly. And of course, there was always the possibility that if Thomas Massey was to reject it, that Democrats could come together and support it, even if it's uncommon for the party out of power to support the budget of the opposite party. And of course, given Matt Gates's warning at the top of this video, Kevin McCarthy likely wants to do everything in his power to avoid having this bill passed with Democratic support to compensate for a lack of Republican support. Now, in terms of what this bill actually does, here's what we know. First off, it would suspend the debt limit until 2025 after the presidential election, which has infuriated some Republicans since it means they won't be able to use this issue to again hurt Biden before the next presidential election. And of course, they would love nothing more than to hurt Biden, even if it means threatening to crash your own economy because something, something fiscal responsibility.
It would cut a total of $136 billion, with those cuts coming from a 1% limit on the growth of federal discretionary spending over the next two years. It would cut $20 billion of the $80 billion in IRS funding that was allocated thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, even though doing so would actually add to the deficit, considering we actually make money by funding the IRS by clawing back revenue from wealthy tax cheats, which, by the way, is how you know Republicans don't actually give a shit about the debt. It would impose work requirements on adults ages 50 to 54 who are on food stamps, but the bill also exempts veterans, the homeless, and people who were children in foster care, meaning that the number of people eligible for food stamps will actually increase, according to the CBO, which scored the bill. And I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that Republicans probably aren't too thrilled that they'd actually be expanding that program. It would prevent Biden from continuing to freeze student loan repayments. It would claw back $30 billion in unspent COVID funds. And it would include permitting reform and specifically approve permit requests for the Mountain Valley Pipeline in West Virginia. Because of course Joe Manchin's fingerprints are all over this, and of course it is for increased fossil fuel production. Is this a great bill? No. Could it be worse? Could it have cut earned benefits and repealed climate funding allocated from the Inflation Reduction Act and made deeper cuts and stricter work requirements? Yes. Should it be passed? Considering the alternative is an economic catastrophe, yes, it should absolutely be passed. And I say that as someone who recognizes that the bill isn't great, but that default is a hell of a lot worse. Gonna go out on the limb and suggest that five days before default isn't the time to be an absolutist. Of course, given this bill's urgency and the catastrophic impacts that would come from not passing it, it should come as no surprise that more and more Republicans are coming out against it. Why? Because not only is the prospect of default not a red line for them, it's actually welcome. They want the chaos because A, then they can blame it on Joe Biden, which they are doing anyway, and B, when government doesn't work, that plays to Republicans' favor, and they get to revel in the mayhem by going around and telling everyone, see, we told you government is broken, Democrats want you to fund the government when the government doesn't even work. Of course, the part that they don't tell you is that government works just fine when competent people are in charge, and the only times the government does break is when one party in particular has a say. Funny how it always seems to work out that way, huh? So look, for what it's worth, I do believe that there will be enough reasonable lawmakers to get this bill passed, even despite the usual whining from the extremists. But I hope that people are paying attention to what Republicans risked in order to get these concessions. They risked the health of our entire economy, millions of jobs, billions of dollars, and the possibility of a years-long recession. These are not serious people. They are arsonists who are working to burn the government down because they believe it'll redound to their political benefit. So if you've ever called yourself fiscally responsible, then I hope you realize which party is working to destroy that economy as we speak. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish-speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.